Today let's discuss replacing a vacuum operated EGR valve. Today's example is a late 80s General Motors big block with throttle body fuel injection. This has been having some issues with the EGR valve sticking open causing a low vacuum concern and poor drivability. You can see we've already gone ahead and replaced the vacuum control solenoid. Uh, not a bad idea to replace these in pairs. First things first, to replace the valve, we're going to get the vacuum line out of the way. Now we've got our two mounting studs on the bottom here. And we're going to wiggle our wrench in there. This is a 13 millimeter wrench in which we're going to loosen up these nuts here and remove the valve. Now we're going to install a universal or a multi-fit application EGR valve on this truck. And so first thing we're going to do is transfer the numbers over from the original valve just in case somebody should ever need to replace this at another time, we can see what the original number was. Once I've put that on there, we've also got another clear sticker we'll put over it to protect it so it doesn't get all smudged with oil. But now we're going to have to take a look at the instruction sheet. Now I know that's difficult for a lot of people to do, but this does have great instructions here, so I'm going to recommend following along with them. Because this is a multi-application unit, it's going to come with options for different orifice sizes here on the bottom of the valve. And so on the back of the instruction sheet, we're going to have a reference chart here in which it'll fit an AMC, a Ford, or a GM product. Then we've got all the OE numbers here and then which orifice we're going to need to use. So if we look at the chart here and we find our valve, which is a 170-87189, it is not required to replace a smaller orifice washer in here. Now because this is a big block it's flowing a lot of air and so it's able to overcome a lot of EGR flow. Now if this is something smaller like a 4.3 liter let's say or a smaller displacement engine we're going to want to make it a smaller opening so the EGR flows much smaller amount of air and doesn't kill the engine. So we're all set to go here. We're going to take the gasket that came with us. Now you could go ahead and put a small dab of adhesive on here in order to stick this to it. Makes it a little easier to install. But we've already gone ahead and cleaned the old gasket off the truck. We're going to take this new valve and new gasket and we're ready to install it on the truck. Now that we've got the new EGR valve sitting on the intake on the truck, uh, because it's got a little smaller diaphragm, we can now get at it with an extension and a 13 millimeter swivel socket. We'll work back and forth snug these up, get it torqued down properly, and we'll reinstall our vacuum line here. Then we just need to reinstall the air cleaner and test the system. Now if we have a scan tool we can run some bi-directional controls here, ensure that when we command the vacuum solenoid on it applies vacuum to the valve and the valve opens up under the proper conditions, or we can take it for a test drive and see if any trouble codes reset. But now we've just explained how to replace a vacuum controlled EGR valve.